Yes, we're pleased to be joined now by Dr. Varun Vora, the academic director and clinical toxicologist at the Michigan Poison Center. Dr. Vora, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Tyler. Appreciate having you on. So we are, of course, in the middle of summer now, or just about through the month of July at the time that we are uh, taping this. And that, that doesn't mean that the potential poison concerns or other hazards in the home and outside in Michigan go away because we're already fully into the summer. What are some of the more common summer poison concerns in the home that people may run into? Yeah, you know, I think you, you kind of alluded to the fact that you know, outside the home, a lot of people are outside, the weather's a lot better. So um, things that are kind of associated with that would be things like, you know, insect repellent as well. Um, so especially with kids. So we wanna make sure that, you know, you're using those products only on your skin um, and that adults and caregivers are the ones applying it to children. Um, the common ingredient is usually DEET. So DEET, many people have probably heard of it. Um, you want to make sure that um, if you are using a product like that or any other insect kind of repellent, um, that you're applying it only on the skin, you're not putting it under your hands, you're not putting it um, all over your face per se. Um, and DEET, the, the active ingredient in many of those repellents, um, can be pretty toxic in higher concentrations. So you always want to make sure you want to look at the concentrations, anything over 30%. Of DEET, you want to avoid using in young children, especially like infants. Um, and then there are other alternatives available. So picaridin is another one that's uh, pretty common amongst um, insect repellents and has shown to be relatively safer compared to DEET. Uh, DEET. Um, and then on the other side, when people do get stung or bit uh, by an insect or say like a bee sting, um, first and foremost, if anyone's having trouble breathing, um, whether you know you feel the airway is closing or they have a lot of swelling in the neck or the face, um, you want to make sure you want to call 911 because that could be a true anaphylaxis. Um, and if someone does have a known allergy, um, the use of an EpiPen always have that handy, especially if obviously you have a known allergy. Um, and you know, in the event that you do get stung, uh, there are certain ways that if you can see the stinger you could use sort of the um, sort of a blunt edge of say like a credit card or some sort of object or a card to sort of um, try and pry that stinger loose if you can see it and just kind of um, sort of scrape the sur uh, surface of the skin um, if that's possible. Um, otherwise, I mean, there are barbecues happening, a lot of people picnicking, et cetera. So uh, food safety is obviously an ongoing issue uh, with grilling and barbecues. So making sure that you're keeping you know, hot foods hot, cold foods cold, especially the colder foods. So things like when you come get into meats, uh, poultry, fish, things of that nature, uh, making sure that you're storing them in separate containers from other food items. Um, also, when you're preparing them, making sure that you're preparing them away from the other food items that are gonna be consumed, like fruits and vegetables, et cetera. Um, hand hygiene is gonna be a really important uh, component. Regularly washing your hands in between preparing different types of foods, especially when it comes to the meats. Um, and never leaving, you know, cold foods outside of a cooler for more than one to two hours, um, especially like, you know, today or th this past week has been really hot. So when it gets over 90 degrees, uh, you want to make sure that you're, you're keeping foods um, inside or not keeping foods outside the cooler for more than an hour. Um, and, you know, with celebrations, fireworks is a big thing. I know we had the 4th of July um, and, you know, there's, there's some, some, some more holidays that are gonna be coming up where people are gonna be um, celebrating with fireworks. So, you know, July was National Firework uh, Safety Month, actually. So um, always, always wanna be on the lookout and vigilant when using fireworks um, in terms of safety. Uh, the little even sparklers that kids use can get really hot. So up to like 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so making sure that you're exercising um, more common sense and uh, safety precautions. So not handling lit fireworks, keeping kids and everyone at a safe distance away from lit fireworks. Eye protection is always a good thing. Having a bucket of water nearby is really important as well. Um, and in the event that fireworks are ingested for any for any reason, and that does happen, we do get calls about that at the Poison Center. Um, do not make anybody vomit. Um, these products have pretty caustic or corrosive substances in them, different types of metals like barium, lithium, um, you know, nitrates as well, which can be very irritating and damaging to the to the airways and the throat. Um, do not force vomiting. So call us or call 911 right away um, if that does happen, because it can be really serious, especially in kids. 
But joining me, Dr. Vern Vora from the Michigan Poison Center on the Michigan Megacast. You can find more information from the Michigan Poison Center by visiting their website at poison.med. Dot Wayne dot edu or just search Michigan Poison Center, uh, including on the Wayne State University website. It is a service of Wayne State University. We're joined, of course, by their academic director and clinical toxicologist, Dr. Varun Vora. Uh, Dr. Vora, also uh, pretty interesting as, as there's so many people that are visiting our waterways in the state of Michigan, whether it be the, the Great Lakes or some of our many inland lakes. Uh, the state wants to warn on, on harmful algal blooms in the Great Lakes and and uh, also on um, certain foams that do that do form on the uh, on the shorelines of water bodies, and why people should be concerned about that. Can you give us some insight? Yeah, I mean, there, you know, that's been sort of a common thing, especially you know, in the state, like you mentioned. And these these can be harmful. They can contain, you know, um, certain types of bacteria um, as well. Uh, so we're, you know, we're always on the lookout for that. We do get calls about it every now and again, and we want to make sure that, you know, in the event that they're, you know, check with your local municipalities um, and, and regions to see whether there are sort of active algal blooms in, in those waterways or areas where um, people will be um, sort of vacationing or um, doing their getaways or the recreational times and to avoid um, obviously ingesting that type of water. Be careful with kids when they're going into it, especially with pets as well, because they can be also susceptible. Um, so check with your local with your local district as well, uh, making sure that um, there is there are nothing identified in, in your local region. Um, but otherwise they can lead to, to certain complications. A lot of you know potential GI effects, more gastrointestinal um, acutely. Um, and then we want to avoid obviously any sort of bacterial infection with with uh, with water, especially. So, um, if you have any more, you know, questions or information, feel free to call us. The number is one eight hundred two 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 one two two two, and we can obviously help with that in your specific region to see if there's any sort of areas to to be wary of. 1-800-222-1222 is the phone number. Again, 1-800-222-1222 is the 24-7 free expert uh, poison help from the Michigan Poison Center. We're joined by the academic director of the Michigan Poison Center, as well as a t clinical to toxicologist, Dr. Varun Vora, on the Michigan Megacast. Uh, Dr. Vora, as uh, kids are, of, of course, uh, having busy schedules, much like adults in the state of Michigan, and of course, with other stimuli in their life from devices and so social media and whatever it be, some are having a lot of trouble falling asleep. And so they turn to uh, and they turn to a substance known as melatonin, commonly used by adults uh, as a sleep aid. Can you tell us about how, what parents should be aware of in terms of melatonin, if they're, if they're giving it to their kids, if their kids are taking it, and precautions people should take if they are taking melatonin to aid them in sleep? Yeah, so, you know, there's a recent study um, you know, that I was a part of looking at sort of nationwide pediatric ingestions of melatonin. Um, and by and large, uh, we do get calls on melatonin and for the most part, they're relatively benign ingestions and exposure. So I wanna be clear about that, but there have been times where um, people have gotten in trouble with that, especially kids uh, where it can have more significant outcomes. Um, now, I think one of the most important things is letting caregivers and parents know that to make sure that you talk to a healthcare professional, whether it's a physician or a pharmacist beforehand, before giving it to anybody else or even taking it themselves. It is a dietary supplement still. Um, so it kind of undergoes a different type of scrutiny and regulations compared to actual prescription medications. Um, but making sure that it's indicated for the child um, and you're adhering to the dosage recommendations provided by the healthcare professional and the label. You wanna to stick to the label um, in terms of the directions. Um, and they come in different formulations. So there's solids, tablets, capsules, there's gummies as well, there's liquids. So we've seen with things like uh, THC edibles in terms of gummy formulations, they can be really enticing to children. Um, so same sort of principle applies here where you don't wanna leave them just out and about in the front of uh, in front of kids um, unattended. You want to keep them out, um, up and away, um, out of their reach, uh, because again, they can come in different colors. They can look like candy, common food items that they might um, be interested in. Um, so it is a very popular supplement that has sort of skyrocketed in sales, especially in the last ten years, uh, especially in the U.S., which is predominantly the 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 biggest sort of market worldwide for melatonin sales. Um, 
so again, speaking to your healthcare professional, call us again. We we have we have a lot of specialists and toxicologists that can provide um, information, further information about that. But by and large, the ingestions or exposures, the inadvertent exposures are relatively benign. Um, but again, if anybody does notice that their child is not behaving like they normally do, uh, their mental status is sort of depressed and they're you know becoming more somnolent or sleepy or what we call it uh, when not expected, or they suspect an ingestion, give us a call. And again, call 911 if there's any sort of question, whether they're having trouble breathing or they're unconscious or um, anything like that. We're joined by Dr. Varun Bora from the Michigan Poison Center on the Michigan Megacast. Again, if you have any of these sorts of issues uh, or immediate concerns, call 1-800-222-1222 or, of course, call 911 if there is an immediate emergency. The Michigan Poison Center number, again, 1-800-222-1222 for more information. Dr. Bora, another couple minutes with you before we'll say goodbye today. Any other hazards or uh, common issues that the Michigan Poison Center is currently uh, getting more information about or hearing more about from residents in Michigan that Michiganders should be keeping aware of. Right. So I think, you know, with being outdoors, um, whether that's, you know, common recreational areas, um, even golf courses, things of that nature, there's a lot of pesticides that are applied um, to those areas. So you want to make sure that you're not, you're avoiding skin contact with those things, uh, with those items or those, uh, those products. Uh, especially you want to make sure that you're not applying them when pets are present. So if people are applying them in, say, your backyard or wherever it is, uh, you want to keep pets out of that area. Um, and if you do get it on your skin, make sure that you're washing it off immediately. Um, and if you have any further <clears throat> irritation or any concerns, again, call us and we can help guide you through uh, what, what the next steps are. Um, sort of in the same line as barbecuing and grilling, um, a lot of torch fuel and uh, lighter fluid um, is present uh, because of that. So these are known as hydrocarbons. So these can be very um, sedating if ingested inadvertently. Um, they can be a choking hazard. Uh, people can aspirate these, meaning when things get accidentally um, enter the airways and the lungs, which can be a really, really serious issue. Um, so you want to keep these away from kids, especially you want to keep them away from other flammable objects, just like fireworks. Um, and in the event that a kid child does ingest it, we do get called, we see cases about them at the bedside. Um, they're, they will have sort of a, a sleepy sort of disposition. Their, their mental status will be depressed because that's what it, it can cause sedation. Um, and increase that choking and, and aspiration risk. Do not force vomiting in, in anybody with these kind of ingestions or any type of ingestion. Call us first or in the event of a, an acute emergency, call 911. Um, otherwise, people on boats, especially outside um, on the waterways now is, is always a concern with carbon monoxide. A lot of people don't realize that boats are significant um, emitters of carbon monoxide, especially so hanging around by the back of the boat. Um, you don't wanna be back there too long while the boat's on. Um, and you know, grilling, going back to grilling, avoid um, grilling inside closed spaces because that's also another carbon monoxide risk. So you wanna make sure that's well ventilated and you're outside while doing it. 1-800-222-1222 is the number from the Michigan Poison Center for non-acute uh, emergencies uh, involving potential poisoning or other hazards. 1-800-222-1222. Or if you are having, as Dr. Bora said, experiencing an acute emergency, as always, we encourage you to call 911. Dr. Bora, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Tyler.